I love PS1 games, and PSN has a pretty great selection of PS1 classics. Almost every notable PS1 game is available to purchase, but there is still a select few that I wish finally made it, such as Mega Man Legends, Tekken 3, Sheep Raider, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. But why haven't a lot of these games made it to PSN? Surely they would sell, I mean there's a pretty big demand for them. Well, in this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain how old PS1 and PS2 games become PS1 and PS2 classics on PSN. First, they need to have the original disc, but they need one for each region that they're gonna release it on PSN for. So for a game like Final Fantasy VII, if they're gonna release it on the North American PSN store, the European PSN store, and the Japanese PSN store, they need to have the original discs for the US release, the PAL release, and the Japanese release. Also, the game is three discs long, so all of a sudden, for this one game to have a near worldwide release, they need to have nine different discs for this game. The discs also all have to be in good condition so that there are no hitches in the image ripping process. If they can only find the Japanese version of a game, the game can only have the potential of being released on the Japanese PSN store. Well, except for a select few like Mega Man, which don't need to be translated in order to be playable by an English audience. Of course, in a case like Final Fantasy VII, Sony can easily get those copies, but for some games that got a short print release and may also have no license holder to print anymore, they become awkwardly hard to find. Sony could theoretically get the image from some third-party ROM and emulator website, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't do that for a variety of reasons, including legality. They then rip the discs into digital images, play through them, and bug test the living hell out of them. Not just one version, but all different region versions. This is called Quality Assurance, or QA for short. You might think, well, why does Sony have to bug test them? If they work perfectly on a PS1, surely they would work perfectly on a PS3. Well, there's two issues with that. The first is that it assumes that games didn't have some big technical flaw in them back when they were first released on PS1. This is Sony basically just stopping any broken game from being released on PSN. The second is that emulation is never 100% perfect. Never. The PS3's built-in PS1 emulator is pretty good, but unless you're using the original PS1 hardware, there will never ever be true 100% compatibility through emulation. The emulator may cause new ways for old games to break, and only through firmware updates can the emulator be made to be more stable for those games. Therefore, a game can fail quality assurance, and it may not even be the game's fault. So now let's say for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, they have all the discs for all the regions they want to release the game on PSN in, and the game passes quality assurance. So far so good, right? Now comes the legal testing. You see, legally, if a game is gonna be released on a platform it has not been released for in the past, it counts as a new release. It does not matter if it's just a direct image rip from a PS1 game, a PS1 Classics release of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater counts as the PS3 version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater in the eyes of the law. The Tony Hawk video game franchise is owned by Activision and has been since the very first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Sony cannot release Activision's product on PSN without their consent. So Sony goes to Activision and says, we want all four Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games from PS1 on PSN. Activision says, sure, we'd love to, but first we have to check with our legal team. And then Activision's lawyers say, you can release those games on PSN as long as you own or have licensed a combined 100% of the content in those games. To which Activision says, oh crap, all of the music in those games were licensed. We used to have the licenses for those songs over a decade ago when we first put out those games, but since those old PS1 games on PS1 legally counts as new releases, 
we can't do that unless we reacquire those licenses. So then Activision goes over to their financial team and then they say, well, we're not gonna waste money buying music for old PS1 games when we're dumping most of our resources into new Call of Duty and Skylanders games and Destiny is costing us about $500 million. Activision then calls up Sony and says, hey, that Tony Hawk deal can't be done. Click, done, the story's over. It can sometimes get weirder than that. Einhander is an amazing PS1 shooter by Squaresoft whose rights are owned by Square Enix. It only released on Japanese PSN despite being released in Japan and North America on PS1. It can be an issue of them only having the Japanese disc available when the PSN deal happened. It can be that there was some weird licensing or general legal issue that only let them put it out in one region but not another. It could just be that Square Enix only thought that the game had nostalgia market ability in Japan. Here's a crazier example. A bunch of games from the shooter series R-Type used to be on PSN and Wii Virtual Console. The company that made them, IREM, took almost all of them down from those services. It wasn't a legal issue, it wasn't an issue of quality assurance, they are no longer available simply because the company does not want them to be. Now throw in the fact that some games, because they're so old, don't even have license holders anymore, and that's a really weird legal gray area. Now also throw in the fact that the PlayStation Vita came out in 2012. Guess what? The Vita counts as a different platform in the eyes of the law. So now, all of these games that have passed all these legal hoops and have passed quality assurance for PS3 and PSP, if they're gonna be released on the Vita, they have to go through that whole process over again. And a lot of companies just cannot be bothered. Activision got all those PS1 Crash Bandicoot and Spyro games on PSN years before the Vita came out. And now, two years after the Vita, they're still not available on Vita. And then there's also Final Fantasy V, which somehow passed quality assurance for PS3 and PSP, but failed for Vita when every other Final Fantasy game became available for Vita. It finally passed quality assurance in early 2014. But long story short, that's the basic process of how old PS1 and PS2 games make it onto PSN. Thanks for watching, and remember, you can click that like button, comment below, subscribe to my channel for more if you want, and I'll see you next time.